So Chinese EV maker Neo has announced its own smartphone. Guys, welcome back to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a like and a comment down below. What do you think about this news? Neo launches its smartphone. The Chinese EV maker needs a boost. So they've released this. They announced it in, in their show on Thursday. And it's an Android phone with prices starting at around $900 and shipping to begin on September 28th. Um, up a bit pre-market, but then they tumbled. Neo expects at least half of its users to buy the phone. The company's cumulative deliveries of vehicles stood at 383k at the end of August. The company has said it isn't looking to compete with other phone manufacturers, but instead it's aiming to give EV drivers a better experience as smartphone integration becomes an increasingly important part of the value of a car. So what do you guys think about this news? Obviously, this is a stock that is way, way down compared to its peers. If we look at other EV makers, well, first of all, Neo, it's a $15 billion. It's not, that's, it's not a small company by any means. It's not profitable yet, right? So they're losing money. They need to get this in check. So kind of confusing that they're launching a phone, a new product um, releasing to the market to try to manufacture a new product when they can't even get their own operations into profits. That is their EVs. They have a bunch of stuff. I mean, if you go to Neo, they have like a lifestyle. They have furniture. <laughs> Uh, they have clothing brands and you can see here's the neo evs again this is a chinese ev electric vehicle car company it was originally it was kind of the first alternative to tesla to ipo and so it had a very strong kind of post-covid um, bull market but now there's a lot of other options right and so you can see the world of neo they have an autonomous car over here a lot of people are working on you know kind of like the tesla robo taxi probably going to drive itself so um, we'll see what happens there. Clean parks, uh, 10 billion kilometers and beyond. Neo Life, kind of their lifestyle home decor brand. Here's an EP9, one of the fastest electric cars in the world. So more of a kind of a supercar, sports car. Over there, they have the power, the home power charging and, and, and all of that, similar to how Tesla's getting into, got into this segment. This is pretty cool. Power Mobile Recharge, 100 kilometers in just 10 minutes with these kind of, you know, vans that you can order um, on on your smartphone right one click for worry-free service 10-year unlimited warranty worry-free service package lifetime free roadside rescue so they have all that going on this is neo house it's kind of like their their stores are, are this experience that they've built they look really cool you can find the videos of these on youtube so neo houses you know cafes galleries a place for kids to to play and um, some kind of work stations. Okay, so Neo, fifteen billion dollar company. Their revenues are increasing, so they are they are hitting it. They are killing it in that end. So this is a pure growth stock, right? They're growing. Their sales are growing. You can see the, over the last six years, they've grown from, you know, under one billion to seven point one four billion last year. Expected to do eight point five, and then to cross ten and do thirteen point two seven next year so that's tremendous sales growth they just need to get those earnings uh, into profitability at least starting next year this earnings is projected to be growing as it as it you know trends towards profitability projected 2027 you can't put a lot of weight into that only one analyst you know analyst don't go that far out it's just risky it doesn't make sense more data is going to come to light and so at least it's trending towards zero, but they are entering this new market. I don't know how much this makes sense. You can see that here, right? These numbers, they've gotten worse, right? Negative 20 EPS is now negative 0.45 a year later. Um, yeah, here's the sales by the quarter. And these numbers have just started to go down, which is pretty interesting. Okay, and so let's take a look at Lee, for example. This stock has been rallying. This is the turnaround story when a stock um, goes from not making profits and then turns it around into profitability, right? 200% sales growth. So Lee is up over 80% this year. We saw um, XPV is, is, is up this year, not profitable like Neo. BYDDF, which I've made a video about already, excellent growth. You know, look at this sales growth here, $20 billion dollars okay 20 billion dollars in a quarter that's huge very bullish on this one you guys can check out the byd video but you don't see these kind of 
green numbers um, um, for, for NEO. So it's a bit concerning. They're entering this market. I think it makes more sense to have launched an app, right? You just, if you want to, the whole point is the connectivity to the car, the experience, launch an application uh, on the smartphone because now you're competing in this new market and, you know, you have no experience in this market and, and you need people who, they need to own a Neo to buy your phone. So like your, your customer segment, your target audience is pretty small. Someone, if they don't have the Neo car, I'm not sure they would buy the Neo phone. And if they buy the phone, they're going to need the car to go with it. And so, you know, I think an app would have made more sense, would have saved, would have been a lot cheaper. And uh, who knows how much this, this product category makes sense. Anyways, Neil tried to break out here over the 200 moving average. You can see it all started bottoming here where we have red dots, then the Jorbit dots disappeared. And, you know, we put in this double bottom with a bit of divergence, you know, a small base double bottom like so. We have divergence. Okay, we broke through the highs. We like when that happens um, one by one, right? So let me let me break it down for you slowly. How are we bottoming here, right? We have a dark red dot um, that's kind of heavy bearish um, momentum, and the lower time frame Jupiter um, bar is red. Okay, tried to break out, pulled back, didn't work. We got a light red bar, so it's not as big as the the red one, but it's still bearish, right? We lost our green tag here, went back to red, and we expect lower lows. We did make those lower lows. Okay, we made those lower lows. Now what happened when we double bottomed here? came up and now we regained our green dot, came back to double bottom and there was a lack of red dots. So now it's getting interesting, right? When we came down this time, we lost our green dots and we lost our green dots, right? You can see the 21 EMA turns red. It's the same thing as the, the lower time frame bias bar. And so that red, you don't want to buy here. You expect lower lows. Now we come up, get our green dots, get our green dots back, come and keep them. We kept them, right? We didn't get red again. So that's a good sign. You also have your pendulum divergence, which is key. And what you have is a growing green pendulum. You can see the small green pendulum bars here are now growing, right? While the red pendulum is shrinking, that's bullish divergence. Okay, you also have a nice shakeout below this bottom where you shook some traders out, stopped them out two days in a row, close back above. That's strong. You have double green shades with divergence. Green shade is extreme oversold conditions. So that's all happening in tandem, right? Green dots, you know, green tags, you, you don't lose your green, you, you keep them, now you have strong divergence, no red, no weakness, no heavy bearish momentum, divergence, double green shades, okay, shake out right there, nice strong candles, you even trade it up, and yes, you rejected the 21 for a few days, but on this retest, this day tried to sell off, but it held that key level, it held the double bottom level, traded back up and closed green. Okay, you also have some trend lines like so, right? You're, you're testing, testing, testing three times. You needed more than two tests on a trend line, broke through. And so this whole move right here is essentially retesting that trend line as support as well. Okay, and so that all happened first. I just wanted to illustrate that to you. But what we like, um, what, we, what we think is key, so that's the double bottom, is when you break higher highs, because there was no really break higher highs here. But here, this blue line right here, we broke higher highs, with our green ta um, tags, our green tags, and a strong green pendulum, right? At this point in time, green pendulum's very strong. You have your momentum. You have an earnings beat, okay? See that green earnings, 10% beat on estimates. Now you're trading above the moving averages. So all that came together, and you're trading above the moving averages. The big difference, you're trying to catch a falling knife, trying to trade a reversal or find a bottom is very tough. That's why you need to focus on these details that we just talked about to even get started. Um, you know, this has to be your bare minimum. You have to watch the, the pendulum and the volume, the momentum, how it's shifting, how it's shifting. Okay, volume something else we didn't talk about. These are kind of volume candles. But you can see these candles are not dark red. They're kind of light red over here. And then you start to get some dark green candles on a breakout, dark green candles on the hold. So that's the volume coming in, dark green candles on the way up. Okay, and then yes, what happens next? We sold off pretty dark red, not, not too dark. But on the pullback, on the correction, the volume dries up. It lightens up. Look how the volume gets. And you can visualize that with normal volume bars. Okay. I'm just working on adding that to the Jupiter orbit. You can see on the breakout, you know, these big green volume bars, 
and on the way down in this correction kind of volume declining right and that's what you want to see when when all this is happening so like i said what we really like to see this is trying to catch the bottom you need all these details in order to do that but what you really want to see to get involved in a trade if you want to avoid trading reversals which is dangerous now you're trading with the trend why what you really want to see is a break higher so a higher high and a higher low so you need to see all this the declining volume now you have a higher low and now you're again above the moving averages you need to hold the moving averages here you held you got there two light volume days right holding the moving averages and you're also getting your moving average golden cross there's your ema 21 crossing over the 50 so a, a golden cross and then this is kind of the confirmation bar right here nice green volume bar the pendulum flips back to green from red green volume big kind of morning star pattern right there and so that signaled your continuation so that was the start of a move it was it was pretty excellent that was a 72 percent move trading above the 200 moving average okay something else i forgot to mention is on the way up here and on the retest you can see the 200 moving average it's been very light when it's light it means you have relative weakness when it's dark green relative strength so just something we added to the jupiter um orbit the jupiter orbit and by the way this says jupiter pro because for those of you jupiter traders who are um in here uh what to do it's the same thing right um i just i'm working on a new jupiter pro jupiter orbit i just haven't launched the jupiter pro yet but the jupiter orbit has all these same things the emas the thoughts and the the thickness and all that okay so thick green means relative strength so on the breakout on the pullback on the hold on the golden cross uh, the volume and the pendulum profile are beautiful you have strong relative strength it means you're trading stronger than the rest of the market you always want to buy strength right that's the difference buying strength instead of buying weakness on this whole bearishness look how light this thing is the whole time you're trying to catch a bottom buy you're buying weakness you're buying weakness and you keep getting stopped out making lower lows don't try to catch a falling knife but now everything we just detailed happened and now it's been strong for like three weeks in a row right and so 72 percent move we got your light green dots turned to dark green dots that's beautiful and um and that's beautiful right so the problem is you came down and you couldn't hold the 200 moving average you lost your lower time frame green tag turned red you have a strong red pendulum on the way down this was a big red flag you can see the dots turned red broke through and uh, now you have all your death crosses okay so this thing very bearish again bearish fundamentals and now it's kind of bear flagged and gap down and broke down so where are we now okay we are building some divergence but again we need it we need a detail like we did back here this is bearish it it, it it tacked red again so it's bearish bias means we should look into short red shades instead of long green shades right when you have red shades up here you want to short when you're bearish when you're tagged red okay so we need to be very careful we need to see all these details again if we're going to try to buy so what's happening here today we have this gap down right so we're you're gonna you're gonna have some sort of gap resistance right there this is a gap down and then unfilled gap that's very bearish a sign of weakness right you gap down you couldn't even try to fill the gap or test the lows here you traded down on a strong volume that you see how dark red that is again that's volume um look at the volume on that day right strong volume they gap down and unfilled gap very weak you can see how these things line up right this is where you had a wick previous wick it's a level right that's a key level up here you kind of bull flagged into it that's a key level and so as long as that's overhead it's going to be overhead resistance and weakness so for now what you want to see you don't want to try to buy this because again yes the lows look like they're close but this is a 20 percent move down here right so if you can get this thing for 20 percent cheaper it's going to make a lot more sense something that's struggling like this something that's struggling fundamentally and something the market's not going to know how to digest the smartphone news right and so i i see a dark red dot not even a light one so what i need to see is i expect lower lows give me lower lows and either give me a light red dot to show that the momentum's fading or no red dots or kind of a three drives move with divergence um something like that you're going to form some kind of pivot you want to break it higher and retest right you want to see the red volume fade um so declining red volume then you want to see the green volume pick up some highs to break and and things of that nature you're going to want to see your lower time frame green tag during the consult you know you want to see that happen before it's a sign of things to come okay and your lower time frame green dots so not buying this yet i'll be interested maybe around seven um uh, you know you have first green shades i'll set you know an alert for double green shades and so so i'll do that 
um, shade on like that and I'll set an alert and then I don't have to have this on my watch list because right now it's it's not interesting to me but I think you know this thing can really move uh, when the market moves uh, shade oh, wow the shade has turned on that's funny it just turned on so oversold conditions I, I did it wrong I need a shade off okay so um, that's an alert I'll set and I don't need it on the watch list now. I'll watch it um, a bit later um, if it gets more interesting below $8. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think about the smartphone news for an EV maker. Um, a lot of we talked in our Qualcomm video about how they're trying, they're really focusing in on the EV market as well. And there's going to be this whole synergy between um, your automobile and your, your phone. And it's, it's kind of the new thing that we own that's going through this digital revolution. All right, guys, much love. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your weekend. Stay safe.